It's a two five hand. Uh-huh. Uh, Barona Casino. It's a five hundred to fifteen cap. What what casino? Barona. A Verona yeah, in where is that exactly? I've never San been Diego. In San Diego. San Diego okay. Casino. Yeah. In San Diego. Okay, cool. So this is Indian Casino in California. They don't have any restrictions, right? Uh they don't, but unfortunately like this casino did close down. Uh or I'm sorry, the poker room closed down uh when COVID happened and they say they're not bringing it back. But oh, okay. we've had uh the seven mile card clubs opened up and then we have Hamul opened up. And Morongo too, right? Uh, Morongo, yeah, that's a bit of a drive here, though. So, know. so did uh, they? So, hard. anybody, it's not doesn't know about um, Cal, local California politics. This is actually what it's kind of an interesting thing. It's actually what stops online poker really from ever coming to California. And I really don't know if we'd ever see it in our lifetime. Is that the uh, Native American casinos have deep pockets and have a lot of lobbying interests in Sacramento, and they are the ones basically that are blocking it. What was interesting is is that after the card rooms reopened and then shut down, I'm pretty sure the Indian casinos, the Native American reservations, they are not they're not subject to any type of state regulations, right? Like they can do whatever they want. Could they even play without masks if they wanted to? Uh, no, they were enforcing masks. Um, but yeah, you are right. Like I know for a while there, Hamul was the only nine-handed game in the state that was open in an actual establishment. Yeah. Um, and like they just reopened the seven mile. That's not an Indian casino, but they did the whole outdoor thing like they're doing in LA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So two, five, 500 to 1500. Yeah. So, uh, we're 1600 effective in this hand, um, folds to the cutoff who is a pretty solid regular opens the 20 and hero is on the button with the queen of hearts, queen of spades, and we three bet to 80. So cutoff opens 20, hero on button, queen of hearts, queen of spades, three bets to 80. Yep. Okay. And the big blind cold, big blind cold calls. And okay. so the action goes back to the cutoff. And now the cutoff actually four bets to 250. And I think in this spot, the only thing really to do with my hand is just call. And then the big blind also overcalls. So and so, the big blind's actually kind of like a big whaley fish type of guy. And like I said, the cutoff's a pretty solid regular. So what's interesting here? What's your name? Corey. Corey. What's interesting here, Corey? Of course, is uh, you know if you've heard Crash Light Poker training and you know looked a lot about some of the newer school thoughts of preflop, that four bet from the uh, cutoff is going to and should be a lot wider because of the dead call in between from the big blind, especially if you're fishy because there's more dead money out there than it would be if you guys were even just heads up. Meaning like even if it was a late position configuration, you guys are pretty deep, right? I mean, you're like 300 big blinds effective. Cutoff right. opens, you three bet button. If it gets folded back around on the cutoff, like Queens is probably not even a four bet. I mean, maybe it's four bet some of the time. Ace King suited, Aces Kings. But now that you've got like a dead caller there in the big blind, if I were the cutoff, I would have a robust four betting range for value and sort of kind of with some bluffs as well. Um, you know, maybe even some of my Ace X suited types of hands on like Ace Five, Ace Four, something like that. And I very well might even four bet Jack Jack here, where I would never, as Jack Jack probably, would, or Jack Jack or Ten Ten, whereas Jack Jack or Ten Ten, um, just heads up would pretty much always be a pure call. I feel like even cutoff versus button. So you have to obviously keep that in mind, you know? Right. Yeah. And that, that's the thing too is that I I've, I have a lot of history with the cutoff, and I know that he's he's sentient to his surroundings and his positional awareness. I do agree that you know he's going to be squeezing pretty light there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe even as light as like Jack 10 suited hands like that. Like you said, he's five suited, mm-hmm. um, tens, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, uh, it's seven fifty to the flop. Yep. And the flop is deuce of diamonds, jack of hearts, three of spades. Deuce of diamonds, jack of hearts, three of spades. Okay. Right. And this is where it gets kind of interesting. I didn't really expect this to happen, but it actually checks to me on the button and I guess that really threw me off because in game I was kind of thinking, you know, okay, what sizing is this cutoff going to take that's going to warrant me to continue mm-hmm. here? 
So when it checked me, I didn't really know what to do, but I kind of in the moment like had this like, you know, overarching feeling like I needed a bet for protection somewhat. Like mm-hmm. I felt like there's a lot of cards on the turn that could be bad for my hand, you know, like an eight, nine, a 10, a jack, a king, an eight. Sure, sure. So I, I made, I made a bet. I bet 300. I don't, I don't know. Do you like this bet or not? Like at the, at the, the second the chips left my hand, I was kind of like, oh crap. Like, so- cause I felt like if I did get called, you know, I'm still in a pretty tough spot. Well, I mean, so when you, whenever you're thinking about betting for protection, and I don't have a problem with a protection bet here, okay? I mean, what's interesting here is you would think, in almost, and that is another thing that's brought out from the computers and even in some top section, in a lot of top section stuff that we do on Crush Light Poker, that almost every single board, especially this one for sure, uh, is C bet by the preflop four better. Right, with, yeah, with the exception of some very, very like you know maybe he's not going to see bet like eight nine ten right or something like that. But on a board like this, sure. this should be see bet in theory. So that's kind of interesting. But I would say that when you want to bet for protection, you don't use a large sizing. So if the pot was seven fifty, I think that I might bet two hundred to two fifty. I don't think that I would check it back. I think I would bet for protection. I would just tend to bet a little bit smaller than what you did. But at the bet in itself for protection certainly isn't bad okay cool yeah that's good to know all right so i have the pot at 1350 now oh i'm sorry uh the big blind ended up folding okay so big blind folds and and the uh cut off calls cut off calls okay so it's like 1150 oh you bet 300 so it's 1350 uh, correct 1350 yep. okay so it turns to seven of spades seven of spades okay and it yep. goes check check so he checks and you just check it back really quickly. Uh, I mean, I thought about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I feel like at this point I was really running out of value. You know, this is pretty dry flop. You know, I'm even if he's wide enough here to be, you know, peeling with a hand like tens or ace five. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I'm ahead of it, and if he checks the river, I can go for value on the river. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, at this point, I'm not even sure about the value part of getting called by worse because it's just like the pot is so big and you bet flop and it's a four bet pot. It's like you just don't have any many of those straight draws. I mean, you could certainly bet again here kind of for that one third to one quarter pot sizing for protection again and then just check back. Um, The check in a four bet pot after you check calls, it's probably not terrible i can definitely see you know and now with one card to come you're not really protecting against all that much either right so right yeah that's what i was going to ask is like if i was going to bet for protection on the turn there like what what are we really trying to protect against that called on the flop yeah yeah i mean i can again i mean it, it may be like a hand like 10 10 9 9 but I get, most of these hands all should be taken for protection by themselves so it's really unorthodox as somebody in the live chat is saying anyways the whole situation. So you check it back. The pot's thirteen fifty, and uh, you guys have what, like right around a thousand left, a little over a thousand, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the river's the eight of spades. So the river's the eight of spades. So it brings him back to our spades. So again, for the podcast, some people are like, "Why do you repeat it? Why do you repeat it?" It's because people listen to this as a podcast. Cut off opens to twenty. You three bet on the button with queen queen to 80 big blind calls cut off four bets to 250 you call big blind calls pot 750 jack of hearts deuce of diamonds three of spades check to hero bets 300 big blind folds cut off calls pots 1350 turns a seven of spades it puts a backdoor spade draw out there check check now the river's the eight of spades so it puts the backdoor spade out there jack of hearts deuce of diamonds three of spades seven of spades eight of spades 1350 okay and villain thinks for about five to ten seconds in jams. So cut off jams for what we said, like thousand fifty or something. Thousand fifty is what I have. Yeah, thousand fifty. So the pot's going to be twenty four hundred and a thousand fifty for you to call. So you're getting about two and a half to one. Hmm. 
I kind of feel like I want to overfold in this spot. Um, trying to think of what kind of hands here would be the bluffs for this guy that would sort of be out to left field. Again, the whole thing is sort of crazy because of the check on the flop. I mean, what bluff would he check call with here? Something that has the ace of spades in it. If he was even out so far as to out to left field, having like, you know, ace five off with the ace of spades, that was some, I mean, that's the, as far out to left field. Ace king with right. the ace of spades, ace queen with the ace of spades. Um, you know, ace king with the ace of spades, obviously you don't really have kings or aces here. Maybe your small bet on the flop followed by a check through on the turn will quote unquote cap you, even though I think that, that term is misused all the time meaning that you're just not going to have three jacks here if he blocks aces and kings then um you know maybe like i said ace king with the ace of spades might be a, a good one where it just he doesn't feel like he's got the showdown value but again it is uh one of these things where i just feel like it's super duper under bluffed in this spot just a small thing too when we're looking at hand composition it's slightly better now that you have the queen of spades. So if you were like, I've got queens, there's six combos of queens, right, that I can possibly have with no queen on the board, which of the ones are that are the best to call with? You try to call with... Um, the spade. You, excuse me, what did, did I say it was uh, slightly better? Or sli yeah, you try, yeah, you would try to call with the one with the spade in it as opposed to the one without it just because... There's less combinations of flushes that he the could flushes, actually yeah. have. Right. Cool. So okay. um, I would probably overfold uh kind of in this spot. What ended up happening? I did I did fold. Um and this kind of factored into my decision too. I kinda wanted to ask if, if you ever think about this. Against this particular villain that I got a lot of hours with, like I feel like all the hands that I've gone to showdown with him, like in big pots, mm -hmm. like I've I've always had the best hand. Not saying like that I've been nitty like it's just like with this particular villain I feel like my bluffs have always kind of gotten through and anytime I've showed down with him like I've, I've had it you know and the fact that he's willing to risk all of his chips to a showdown to me kind of implies that like he's more skewed towards value here does that ever factor into your thinking what that, when you that go into like hi history like history with a player that he, and you said you've always won or he's always won I have like I've always I've always best handed him at showdown uh huh and then, like, my bluffs have always gotten through against him. So I have a really solid image with this particular villain. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think image is a very, very important thing that I talk about, where if you think that he's somehow not going to make... I mean, I mean, it can go either way, right? He can somehow not make a play. He's not going to make a play on you because you basically always have it. Yeah, you might think that the bluffing is, you know, going to be under bluffed. Here's, here's the issue with theory with the theory and where it's not that it fails, it's what people don't understand and where it's misapplied is, is that I don't know what the answer is here. Like I said, if you were to put ranges equilibrium into a solver, maybe queen, queen with a spade is a call. Queen, queen without a spade is not a call. The point being though, is, is that in order for you to make a call with a hand that only has this absolute hand strength, your opponent has to have the optimal bluffs. He has to have enough of the bluffs to to, to force you to defend with a hand like this. And, and people just don't have them really in this spot because they're not right. necessarily studied as much to have those bluffs. Again, the whole hand sort of is out to left field when the guy doesn't start with a C-bet and a four-bet pot on Jack Deuce 3, Rainbow, right? Yeah, that's that's the main reason why I called this hand in is just when, he, when I got checked on the flop, I just had no idea what to do. Um, the other so. thing, the other thing too, is some people are saying Jack X of spades. Um, the other thing too, that some people in the chat are saying the way that this hand went down, he could comfortably bet for value with aces here. Aces with the ace of spades, right? Definitely. Right. Um, you know, it's not something that you see all the time where someone would just jam like that, you know, for that type of sizing, but you know, it could be, but yes, right. I would tend to overfold in the spot for sure. So you know, did you yeah, ever find so, out what happened or what he had? Yeah, yeah. So I, I folded, and then I ended my session shortly after that, and I was like, kind of saying goodbye to the table. And he showed me his phone, and he had his like, you know, poker tracker, hand tracker in it, and he he, he had red aces under his name. He had red aces under. Oh, like under in, oh, when, like in that he, hand? He, do you mean? Right. He was inserting <laughs> his own hand history into his app. And so you saw the hand history in his app. That's funny. No. 
Right, right. <laughs> he he kind of showed me this is like a, oh, okay. you know, we we spent a lot of hours together, so. Oh, that's interesting. I, I mean, I don't know if you necessarily, that's kind of weird. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess it could be taken that way. It's just kind of odd. But yeah, I mean, I would certainly, over, I'd want to overfold there for sure. I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.